I will hopefully be releasing a video very soon. Perchance. The most important factor in your speedrun will be its location. The primary thing you need to look for is desert. Deserts are great because there is generally minimal surface water and almost no underground lakes. Then, try and minimize the amount of river in your area, as you will need to drain these manually. Lastly, find an area as flat and low as possible. The higher the tallest areas are, the longer the World Eater will need to run. This World Eater has two nine-wide trenches. For each one, you must first build and launch the top trencher before removing it and building the bottom one. After the top set of trenchers finish running, you must remove them and rebuild the lower ones to take the area down to bedrock. Here you will have to remove water and liquid to make space for the sweepers later on. While the bottom set of trenchers are running, you should have built the World Eater dupers and its return side. And also don't forget the two obsidian underneath the logic on either side to stop the World Eater when it gets to a certain height. You do not have to build any sweepers yet. To launch the World Eater, simply hit this note block and watch it go down. While unlikely for anything to happen, verify that all the dupers have reached the opposite side before launching it again. While unlikely to encounter much at the top layers, you should remove any and all water and lava you see, as the sooner you remove it, the less likely it will shield other blocks from being blown up. While the dupers are running, you should be building the sweepers and their return side to remove the Y10 lava. There are obsidian in place on either side to prevent any accidental firings. While there will be minimal, one of the downsides of using the World Eater this fast is you will be left with a few floating blocks. In a 528 by 528 area, you are unlikely to encounter more than 30 floating blocks, so it shouldn't be too much of a hindrance, but is something that you have to watch out for. If you're paying attention, you can remove potential floating blocks by removing structures that stick out from the rest of the perimeter. When the World Eater reaches the Obsidian level, this means it is now time to transition from a 12-speed World Eater to a standard double-speed World Eater. The Obsidian ensures that even if you misclick on the note block, the machine will not launch again. For the transition, you must first remove the old logic. To change to a double-speed World Eater, you must just extend the slime line from the sweepers to the dupers. If you are unfamiliar with it, a schematic will be left in the description along with the rest of the world later. The same must be done on the main side, but don't forget to update this piston. Before launching the world eater, use a schematic verifier to check if any parts of the sweepers have been blown up while the world eater was running. It will happen and you may have to take some time to repair it. To launch the world eater again, you must first remove the obsidian, keeping it safely in place. And then just like with the dupers, hit the note block to launch the world eater. It is once again not automatic and you must repeat it for each side. This time it is more important to verify that all sweepers have made it to the other side, as during the first cycle, that's when it's most likely for a sweeper to get stuck. And once again verify that there are no floating blocks, during the lower layers is where you will find the most. After checking that all the sweepers have made it to the opposite side, Make sure to once again remove the obsidian, as it is on both sides, and then hit the note block to launch it again. Since side trenches aren't done in the sake of time, you must manually remove any liquids that appear on the side. There is usually not much and can be done fairly quickly, and does save a lot of time in doing the trenches. 
If a sweeper gets stuck, update it and allow it to continue to the end and wait for it to reach before you launch the world eater once again. When the sweepers reach the end, you can verify that the perimeter is complete by selecting the area with Lightmatica and analyzing it to ensure that there are no blocks or liquids left in the area. If nothing shows up, then congratulations, you have completed your perimeter. To add your run to the leaderboard, please submit your recording to the Technical Minecraft Speedrunning Discord, to which I'll leave the link in the description. There you may also find rules regarding the speedrun, although there aren't many.